Jessica, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Oh, it's so great to be with you. I'm so excited. I like to start every interview by asking guests, as a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh my gosh, I don't have any great answers to this. I think I wanted to be a ballerina. I did all the conventional. I didn't have any big aspirations when I was a child of what I wanted to be. I definitely think I, yeah, ballerina was number one for a while. <laughs> so you like to dance? I did. Yeah, a singer. I wanted to be a singer and a ballerina. For our listeners who don't know what you do, do you mind sharing what you do today? I'm really in this sort of have a passion for early life and early life nutrition. So I co-founded a company called Happy Baby over a decade ago that is the number one organic baby food company in the U.S. And then now uh, I'm co-founder and CEO of Love Every, which is a stage-based learning program. We are really all about cognitive development, brain development, and those meaningful first years of life. I love it. Jessica, I am one of your customers. We have been for years now. Ellie just turned three and I'm so excited about the three-year kits. And you solved this problem where I was a new mom. She was about three months old. And I went into, I think it was like bye-bye baby or something looking. I could tell she was starting to kind of like need something, but I didn't know what. And I went in and I was so overwhelmed and I knew I didn't want anything flashing lights. I wanted something that would kind of stimulate her brain, but I was so overwhelmed. I walked out without anything. And then my, oh my husband God. found love every, and I thought, oh, they're beautiful. They're so thoughtful. It's such a gift to all moms to have access to like be able to purchase these for our kids and like trust that they're good products. I love that they're wood. They're beautiful. So thank you so much for creating this. It's, it's been great. Thank you so much for saying that. You just completely made my day. I will say that I had a similar experience. I think our intuition is telling us that a lot of the flashing lights and the toys that have a lot of bells and whistles just mm -hmm. maybe aren't necessarily long-term healthy for our children and not exactly what we want to connect with them, to feel connected and feel like they're really fueling their development. So there's so much research mm -hmm. on early life and what to do at each stage of your child's development, but it's really hard to sort through it. I had a very similar experience where I, my child was pulling up on one of those plastic flashing lights toys and pushed one button and all of a sudden all these <laughs> lights are flashing yes. and a purple cow popped out. And so I decided that I really wanted to create something more meaningful after I discovered this research on early life and brain development. So thank you for being a customer that's so meaningful for us. Yeah, no, well, thank you. So I read your story in preparing for the interview and that you read this book or the study, or you just mentioned about the brain and kids. And I just thought that's so helpful because for moms who are overwhelmed, especially first time moms overwhelmed to know that there's a place that we can go to that we can trust that someone's already done the work. It feels really good. Do you mind sharing kind of how you got to that point where your journey, where you were in college to today or starting this business? You mentioned having started a happy family brand. Like, can you kind of walk us through a little bit of that journey? Yeah. You know, I think I've always been really interested in so many of us, like all of us making a difference and feeling like I can find a connection with my purpose and what my work life is really contributing positively to the world. When I was younger at my twenties, I discovered these entrepreneurs that were working in the field of business, but that were making really businesses with this, where their social impact was primary. So entrepreneurs like on it, Seth Goldman from Honest Tea or Anita Roddick, mm -hmm. or you know, we have entrepreneurs now, it seems like purpose is really now so much more embedded in mm -hmm. business. At yeah. the time, it was a new concept. I realized I'd worked in nonprofit fields and I had worked in the government. I worked for the mm -hmm. government, so I worked in public fields. I really realized that my love was for the business world because I love the fast pace. I love the mm -hmm. vision of being an entrepreneur and starting something from scratch and using all the skills that you have and putting them into play to build something new but that I also love this intersection with purpose. And so mm. I set my sights on being what's called a social entrepreneur. Mm. At the time that was sort of a new word, mm. went to business school, had a dream to start a food company mm. with my husband that didn't work out, met my co-founder at Happy Family and discovered there was so much in the baby food industry mm. that needed to be reinvented. Only 3% of all baby food consumed was organic when we first launched. And now over 40% of all baby wow. food consumed is organic and Happy Family is the number one brand. And then got really kind of concerned about climate and where we're headed with climate change. And mm. I co-founded an organization for the natural products industry called the Climate Collaborative. So that's sort of my second mm. venture, even though it was in the nonprofit field. 
-hmm. And then in going through that experience of having three children of my own, really realizing, you know, health and nutrition is one piece, but also there's brain development. And I feel like we're missing the mark in terms of the products that we're offering to support parents through that really important early lifetime. So that's the journey. But I think that there, you know, there's so many details to thinking about how you move from having an idea for something and then getting mm -hmm. that out in the world. There's a lot of vulnerabilities. There's a lot mm -hmm. of emotional, there's an emotional roller coaster to yeah. getting there. Yeah, for sure. I'm a mom. I have two kids and I also love the work that I do. I'm so passionate about coaching and I transitioned from accounting to do coaching because I love people and I love helping people. I feel like that's my purpose, what I'm being called to do. So I know of moms who are working and they also want to kind of fill that bucket of purpose. What would you say to a mom who's listening right now? And I started this podcast because I wanted to motivate people to find work that's meaningful to them and that they love to do. I knew a lot of people were miserable in their work. So what would you say to that mom to urge that person in general, who's not feeling that sense of purpose in their daily life? Yeah. I really felt that when mm. I was in my twenties, I really mm. wanted to find my purpose. And I didn't have, as I said, when I was a child, I wasn't always an entrepreneur. I wasn't always clear about what I wanted to be or contribute and how I wanted to contribute. And mm. frankly, we're always reinventing ourselves, right? So wherever mm -hmm. we are, we're always wondering what's next. And I think it's a process and it's a project and it's mm. something to be taken really seriously. Getting a great coach, working with someone like you to be feel grounded in what are my next steps? How am I learning? What am I testing out? What informational interviews do I need to have? How can mm. I discover? I have a kernel of interest in this direction. Mm. What books can I read? What articles can I consume? What people do I admire in this field? How can I learn more? I think that having some journaling, some coaching to really kind of center yourself and think about exploring, for me, it didn't just come to me. It was a mm. process. I had to invest in myself and invest in that process of becoming mm. what I wanted to be. And then I think the second thing, and this is really big, it's really hard, especially when we've been at home with our children or are in life transitions, is to find confidence can be really elusive. Oftentimes we associate positivity and feeling emotionally good and confident mm -hmm. with productivity. What I've learned is that if you can separate the two, if you can say to yourself, I'm just going to start doing, I'm going to put one foot in front of the other. There's one more step I can take. There's a new person I can reach out to mm -hmm. and ask for that informational interview, or there's a person that I can book that I can read, or there's a next step that I can mm -hmm. take to discovering what my purpose might be and separate that from the feelings that you might have that day. So you might be feeling down, uninspired. Mm -hmm. I've been out of the workforce for this long. How can I believe that I'm going to be employable in this mm -hmm. new field, any kind of field, let's say, whatever dream you have, be an entrepreneur, let's say, you know, start my own company. It's really easy for us to feel down about ourselves, mm -hmm. but in the doing you become, and in the doing you become more productive, you discover roadblocks, you discover new ways around those roadblocks, you get on a path and realize that you're in a place that you never thought you would be, but it's a great place. And so I think it's just investing in that and setting aside your feelings enough to the extent that you can recognize them, but not let them sort of dominate and, and grind you to a halt. Mm. Oh, that was so beautiful, Jessica. Thank you. That was so generous. And I love that you're sharing that you didn't know that you weren't as a five-year-old saying, I'm going to start an organic <laughs> food company, right? Like you didn't know that you had to figure it out because I think that's what I see in client conversations a lot. It's like, I know what I don't want, but I don't know what I want. And there's this feeling of like, we should have it all figured out. We shouldn't have a 10 year plan and know all the steps. I love that you shared that it's like taking those small bits of action and that following kind of those interests and that curiosity and taking that consistent, even though we may not feel those positive feelings all the time, just taking the next step. That's so motivating. And maybe I want to like tear up a little bit because I know, and I love and respect what you've done. And so for you to share that, I know that's going to resonate so much with people who are listening. Oh, I love this is such a great moment of connection too for us. Cause I think that that's just so real that people think oftentimes I've always had that in my life where I admire something. I wish that I could have it. I see it and I put it on a pedestal. But when you get there, you're like, okay, I'm here. I accomplished that. I did that. And then you look to the next thing and you admire it and it feels mysterious. And you put it on a pedestal. And I think that cycling 
I'm realizing being a little bit further down in my career that cycling can be helpful, but it also can be harmful. And to really recognize that where you are is good and to set your sights on something and like believe in what's possible. I'm a really big believer in affirmations and in mm -hmm. saying things like what you can vision for your, you know, I go to sleep at night saying a dreaming about love every could have looked like for many, many years before we were out in the market, wow. I would just kind of like dream of making an impact in mm -hmm. the story that you told me was very much the story I was trying to tell myself, like I could make an impact for families. Visualizing that I think can be really powerful. And it's really good to not put everything on a pedestal and feel like it's too out of reach and everybody else has it figured out and you don't. Mm -hmm. And what do your affirmations look like if someone's listening now and says, I Jessica talked about affirmations. I've heard of them. How did you apply them? Did you like say them in the mirror when you wake up in the morning and right before you go to sleep, the visualization, what did that look like? Did you kind of go to sleep and just picture it? I don't know. What does that process look like for you? I'm just curious. And I know people listening will be too. Yeah. I mean, it's taken different shapes throughout my life. Sometimes I've written things down and put it on my mirror, written some words down that feel really relevant and mm. about what I'm aspiring to become. And I always put it in this active voice, like I am mm. the CEO of a company <laughs> that is impacting thousands yeah. of families and bringing meaningful moments to their daily life or whatever the vision is. I also have these, there's probably really dated, but I have these power cards by Louise Hay. That's what Love she's her. called. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you get these, sometimes I'll just pick out a power card that I really need to experience. Like if I need to let something go and I just rediscover them, actually, it was really fun. I've used those over the years. And then Patricia Moreno, she had these workouts or has these workouts. I used to live in New York City about 10 years ago and she's wonderful. And so she has these mantras that you do while you're doing physical activities. So she oh, says, cool. I desire I focus, I intend, I become. And you're doing these physical actions as you're saying these words. And so sometimes I'll connect with myself and be like, I desire, like I see a vision. I want something. I intend to do that. Oh, I desire, I focus. So I really believe deeply in focus. I think focus is so powerful and really not trying to be everything and do everything. You're just really zeroing in on something that was really meaningful. That's going to give you high value. And then I become. So it's just, there's some fun things that are knocking around in my brain at any given time of depending on what I need to affirm. But I really believe in, in telling yourself, giving yourself that vision and speaking that can be very powerful. I love that. And I never heard of that. I've heard of affirmation. I think I have those power cards for Louise Hayes. I'm going to go dig them. <laughs> but yeah. that's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. I know I want to make sure I ask you about being a mom. And I know I have friends and listeners in the podcast who are new moms or who just recently become mom of two. I just recently, I have an almost four month old and my daughter, Ellie, who's three. And I've found myself like, wow, this is really challenging. This is really hard. And that I also feel really passionate about work and what I'm doing in reading and preparing for this interview. I saw that you noted that one of your favorite quotes is the days are long, but the years are short. And I remember hearing this from Gretchen Rubin, who wrote a book on happiness. She talked about that and it really resonates. So I just kind of your thoughts on being a mom working, how do you stay present? I know it must be an active thing that you do. It is active and I go <laughs> and ebbs and flows my, how much effort I'm, sometimes I just feel like I'm just hanging on. Mm -hmm. I've actually, this week has been like, I'm hanging on kind of week, but part of it is I don't have it all in a lot of ways. Like my mm -hmm. home environment is not organized. It's a mess. It's really feels so chaotic. Like the kids, I'd love to say that they put their things away and that it's tidy and that I have beautiful aesthetics, but I don't, we eat really healthy, but we don't eat delicious food every night and we kind of get by and it's like, what can you simplify? What can you just say? I'm not going to be great at this. In big life categories, the concept of having friends and being a parent and being, you know, a partner to someone and being a daughter and being a mother, of course, when we talked about being a parent, but also on top of that, being a friend is really hard. I found that this era in life, it's very hard to be the friend that I was before I had kids. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the work, the work is so consuming. And so that sometimes has like over the years, I've gone in and out of feeling lonely and feeling mm -hmm. like I wish I had more friends, be close friends. And I do and right now I'm in this phase where I'm really nurturing my friendships, but it's really hard because you can't have it all. Like something does have to give. My husband was just saying last night, he was like, you've been seeing your friends a lot. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I gotta make time for date nights with my husband. And I think it's just that, that juggle. It's so hard. It's really hard to feel like you can have it all, but there are some clear things that you can let go of that aren't maybe as important. And if you can discover those things, find those things, whether it's letting go 
for me, it's letting go of having like a beautiful organized home. Thank you so much for sharing that because in the world we live in with social media, Instagram, and we look at these pictures of these homes that are, you know, staged or whatever. And we compare ourselves. I know I find myself comparing my toys don't get put away every night or the house is a mess. I want my living room to look a certain way, but right now it's really a playroom. So thank you for sharing that because thinking about your products are so beautiful. Someone might think, well, Jessica's home must be perfect. You can see my Instagram feed. I mean, we do not have a glamorous setup and oftentimes there's like a mess in the background. I love that you share that and that you share that with the world, right? So you could use your social media to kind of share like this picture perfect world, but you're genuine. And then the fact that you just shared all of that, that was so vulnerable and helpful helpful for especially moms. Cause we put a lot of our, on ourselves. This is one of the things like my inner critic shows up and like, I'm a bad mom. My daughter didn't get to school at eight 30, like the preschool school. She didn't get there at eight 30. I got there at nine and I'm such a bad mom. Like just thinking of all the things. And so you sharing that is imperfect and that we may not, we don't need to have it all like try to do it all basically. It's very generous. So thank you for sharing that. I guess just as a final thought, what would you want to say to a mom? who's listening right now and needs a little encouragement. I've talked to a couple moms and preparing for this interview. Ellie started preschool and she's been sick and now my four month old is sick. And then I have a couple of friends and they're so sick and everyone's just tired. <laughs> so tired. what would you say to them, those moms? Oh, it's so tiring. Sometimes you just can't aspire. Sometimes it's just about getting by and that's okay. <laughs> that is really, really okay. It's been like that this week for me too. I was giving advice to a friend and if you can just take a minute to take a bath with your baby, just like get some skin on skin time. Like there mm -hmm. is, we are hormonal beings. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of hormones involved in parenthood and in motherhood. And if you can just have some cuddles and have some snuggles with your baby, you know, skin on skin or your toddler, just like really like being with them does bring relaxing hormones <laughs> into our bodies and it can help that just meaningful connection time really, really can help us feel better. Oh, that's beautiful. I've never thought about that. Thank you so much. Well, I'm so appreciative of your time today, Jessica, and I'm going to link to your website and to how people follow. I really do love every, and I thank you so much for creating it. Thank you so much for supporting us and also for all the important work that you're doing to encourage people to follow their dreams and find their purpose. Oh, thank you, Jessica. Bye, Lupe. Bye. Thank you.